Good. Yeah. Okay. I hey, what's up, everybody? Dr. Paul here, Cell Regen, another webinar coming at you. Prior to getting started going through all the health benefits of the cold therapy, I want to talk a little bit about Breeze Fest coming up uh, the 27th. Oh, hang on. Let me turn this off so it doesn't have the background. <laughs> There we go. That's oh, yeah, that's a lot easier. Okay, uh, the 27th, so uh, next Saturday, we have the great pride and privilege of having the CEO of Murrow's Co. coming up to hang out with us uh, and all of you guys who decide to come to come freeze off at Horse Tail Falls. Uh, we're going to go out at noon. We have some grab bags, too. So for the first 20 uh, people who register, which is totally free, so come on out. Uh, the first 20 who register, they're going to get a gift bag. And we have tons of great local sponsors. Uh, Ferment is giving us uh, just a free drink for everybody who comes out and sits down and splashes with us. You get the free drink from Ferment. Uh, Last Hope Barbershop used to be Rook's. Great fades. Mike's awesome. You're going to have a $5 gift card for that. There's lots of little bonuses and stuff like that around from all the different local shops. So you get these grab bags of just really great free stuff for you just to come out and better your health, better your energy, better your mind. So Freeze Fest is gonna be great. Um, we are gonna have some photography there so you can come and get pictures of you in the water uh, next to the falls and stuff, it's gonna be pretty cool. And then you just hit us up and we'll give you ones if you like uh, of yourself so you can post or something. So today without further ado, the cryotherapy. Is it, a, is it healthier? Is it a hoax? There's lots of people out there who say that cold exposure is what? Bad for you. I know there's lots of cultures that uh, advocate against it. Like the Chinese culture adamantly against cold. They think it's bad. So like all the, uh, the Chinese war and things like that, that being exposed to deep cold, it's super, super bad for your health. But Lots of new research has come out, most of it due to a gentleman called Wim Hof. He's a fantastic guy. He's a Dutchman who actually lives over in Poland, who they call the Iceman, who's been doing all sorts of really cool scientific researches because he can do so many incredible things with the cold. He can activate and control deep structures inside of his brain called the autonomic nervous system that control lots of stuff. For breath, for example, they control your, your temperature of your body. They control the pulse of your heart. Things that you don't have to think about, thank goodness, uh, naturally controlled by the deep part of our brain. And Mr. Hoff, uh, he, just, he found different unique ways to influence them. And this one, being nice and chilly, was one of the primary ones. So it's, it's crazy what's going on now is we are so addicted to temperature. We love 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit because we're comfortable. It hasn't been always the case for a long time. I mean, maybe it's been the last hundred years that we've had like thermostat control. We almost like fight against it. I mean, we've got a, a double glazed windows. We've got insulation in the walls. We've got cement buildings holding us all together, distancing us from the cold. We have what when it's winter time, when we close up, we've got our jackets, we've got hats, we've got our clothes to separate us out of that discomfort of that 65 to 75 degrees because we love our comfort. But here's the thing. The, what that actually protects us against is some of the most amazing health benefits that we can get is by exposing ourselves to the cold because there is so many benefits. Uh, I think it's kind of a pity that we've lost that ability to actually go in and uh, utilize our system because if, if we expose ourselves to the cold, not only we improve our circulation, we improve our cardiovascular health, our heart system. It's good collagen making for the skin to increase your hair, to be glossed your hair. It gives you more energy, big time one. Clears your mind, a lot of clarity can help out with that. Has benefits for anxiety, for depression, autoimmune conditions, neurodegenerative conditions. They've been doing really, really well by exposing themselves to the cold. So here's some cool stuff about the body. Well, we know about the two systems, circulation, right? So our circulatory system has the pump that, uh, our heart that pumps it out through our arteries. And then once it's done being oxygenated, delivered to the rest of the body, 
it comes up through the veins back to the heart. So that's the system. The heart, not as strong as you may think. You know, they always talk about cardiovascular disorders and disease is the number one killer in the world. Well, to be true, 43% uh, last uh, condensation of the World Health Organization, 43% of the people died in the world of a perfusion-based injury, cardiovascular or respiratory. They're not getting the oxygen. They're not getting the blood exchange to the tissues that they really need. Here's the thing. We do cardiovascular exercise, right? What is that actually exercising? It's not the full cardiovascular system, it's exercising the heart. The heart's a big muscle. We love to have that pump. The thing is the heart doesn't pump the blood that far into our body. It actually pumps it just a little bit away. And then there's something which is the full rest of the cardiovascular system uh, that actually squeezes and rings it like you ring out a tube of toothpaste, the heart pumps, and then the, the arteries squeeze and ring sequentially in this peristalsis motion to drive the blood deeper into the tissues. So that's a good thing because those tiny little muscles in the arteries are actually what distribute it because the heart's not strong enough to pump it all the way down to my pinky toe or all the way up into my head. Uh, we've got to have that vasospastic response of the circulatory system to deliver our blood. How often do we exercise the circulatory system? Next to never. Um, as we exercise, cardiovascularly, we're running, we're doing stuff, the vessels in our body are going to expand. They're going to open up. It's called vasodilation. It, all these are expanding. Vasoconstriction, which is an exercise of these smooth endothelial muscles in the system itself to squeeze and cause that motion. We almost never do that. So when we hit the ice, when we hit the cold, our body naturally has a defense system that it squeezes all the blood because it wants to keep the warmth at the core. Your heart can continue beating whether you have feet or not. So we don't need our extremities when we get to that extreme cold. It triggers a response, all the blood back to the core, which is this is good for you because if you've got inflammation in your body that's floating into the system, it's a lactic acid building up from a nice, happy workout that you're all sore. Uh, Let's get it out, send it to the filter, send it to the liver, hit the, hit the cold, it's all coming right back here. It's gonna get filtered, it's gonna get pulled out of your system. Uh, a couple other things, when you get into the, the water, this builds something called brown fat. Two types of fat. We have normal fat, holiday fat, COVID fat, we got a lot of that. But we also have a separate type of fat called brown fat. And we've almost made that extinct in our body. It's a unique thing that babies have. You know, that little chubby chub that they have that we all love, pinching the cheeks and whatnot. It's a lot of it is going to be brown fat that causes the baby to heat up and actually be able to hydrate itself internally. You know those big humps on the camels and why they can like walk through deserts for forever? It's because they're stored full of brown fat and brown fat can synthesize its own water out of its own tissue. So they don't need water for long periods of time because they're burning fat tissue and it makes it so they can walk for a long, long time without going through hydration. We have that in our system and we can activate it and turn it on. And this cool thing is it burns white fat. Yeah, those cookies you've been chowing down on. Come and sit in the cold, activate that, you're going to turn your brown fat on and it burns white fat, fatty acid calories all day long. So it's good. The system that we're going to be able to do today is actually going through a live setup. So we have our guest here, Mr. Jason Slezak, a friend of the practice and uh, um, all around great guy, super killer on the mountain and uh, on the river, uh, kiteboarding. So we're going to have him go through a live cryo session so you can kind of get the feel for what's going on with some of these benefits out of those next to 80,000 miles of cardiovascular system that we have that can wrap around the world three times. We want to exercise it and we want to show you a live version. So first off, when you hit the ice, you're going to have a few things. First, you're going to go through a sympathetic fight or flight response. When you hit it, how does it make you feel? 
mean, it feels amazing, uh, you know, getting into say like a cold pool or even the cold river in the winter time yeah. uh, is, is kind of a shock to the system. But First going, shock. yeah, go, but going through the Wim Hof breathing and getting in, it definitely makes it more uh, easily, like easier to get yourself submerged. But there definitely is a shock and sort of burning, I guess, is probably <laughs> so, the best way to yeah. describe it. <laughs> when you hit the water, just like you see in the in Hollywood movies, right? Fall through the ice. <gasps> yeah. You come up and have that major gasp. That is real. <laughs> That's your body has an immediate reaction response that triggers your sympathetic nervous system and your body goes into fight or flight mode. Boom. Straight up. And so when we get into this, we're going to have to fight that. And it's about two and a half minutes of fighting fight or flight. Stress, hormones going up. It's very difficult. It's hard. And as Jason is saying, you have different sensations. It goes from shock, getting your breath under control. It tingles, and then it goes to this uncomfortable burning sensation. <laughs> and it feels really terrible when you first start. <laughs> Until you get used to it. Then, it, then I think it's part of the enjoyment. Yes, so it really absolutely. It's part of the process. And then so... After your body definitely attenuates to a lot of stuff and it actually makes you kind of crave it. Mm -hmm. like, like, oh, sure. you're like, oh my gosh, I need my crack of lunch. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with some breath work, deep breath work, because like we said, when you hit the ice, your vessels squeeze and it's gonna drive that blood to the core. So there's less delivered oxygen and perfusion of tissues. So we wanna hyper oxygenate the body. A very short stent before so it takes some it attenuates the body makes the exposure into the cold quite a bit more tolerable when you first hit so what we do go ahead and grab a seat right there sir also clip you up with some little uh, um, booty covers from our uh, good friends over at footworks make great inserts and great other things um they made these little cozies for us but they help protect the toes because when the toes get in there since they're the furthest and most gravitationally challenged center of the body as far as cardiovascular system goes when they get cold they can get really cold quickly and they can become uncomfortable taking away from your beautiful experience in the cold and so we kind of cover up with that so you can really focus on your body and the experience that you're having and not just sit there thinking oh my lord my toes are going to fall off <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do some deep breath work here when you do the deep breath um they are a deep diaphragmatic breath that you come out and then you finish the second half with almost a chest breath like that and so a lot of times we our chest breathers we breathe through an open mouth the chest breathers we kind of have poor posture it doesn't aerate your body in a way that it could or should um so we're going to do deep diaphragmatic breaths and then come back and finish that and it's in a cyclical sort of like uh, fashion so you do deep breath in explode and then you just relax you don't have to force out it's just out so it's a circle about 30 or so of these, basically what you want is to get hyper oxygenated and you will get lightheaded. And you can start to see a little bit of rosy patterns coming up on your cheeks. That's the perfect time that you've got the oxygen saturation that you really want. And then we'll get transitioning over into the ice itself. Sir, let's get to, into some breath work. And it's deep in like that, just fully circular. Pull it in deep and let it go. All the way in, let it go. Circular. This gets deep and you'll start to feel that lightheaded. If you feel the lightheaded, if you feel the tingles on your skin or in your fingers or toes, that's all right. That's kind of where we're going for it. Now, if you look right over here uh, on his cheeks, you can see he's starting to get a little bit rosy right through there. That is a great time uh, of look. That's really a good picture of what we're looking for. So go ahead and take about three more breaths there, Jason. And then take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out. And once it's all the way out, then go ahead and hold it. 
while you're holding your breath, I'll have you come over and sit right here. Let's take about three to five more breaths. Get your last little bit of prep. So here's what's gonna happen. When you first hit the ice, your body's gonna tell you you're dying. So let's go all the way in deep, blow it all the way out. And let's go ahead and take a plunge in there, my friend. Good. Nice. So once you hit that, the body has reactions, right? Our mind, us, we individuals have responses. The body has reactions. They're pre-programmed. When you hit the ice, instantly your sympathetics, your fight or flight begins to spike. It begins to, to raise up and put you through that stressful response because this is no doubt a stressful response. They call it a hormetic stressor or a eustress, a positive stress, just like working out is. But when you hit this, your mind has the initial reaction of like, oh my God, I'm dying. So it starts to squeeze all that blood to the core. All the inflammation particles are acidic. They are acids. Like any acid, the longer inflammation stays on a tissue, the longer it can deteriorate and burn if it's too chronic. So inflammation, over inflammation. We don't want that. So as this squeezes and rings out the tissue, sending all that back to the, to the core, that's what we're really looking for and wanting. But as your body's telling you that you're gonna die, in actuality, this is just really good for the system, really good for the body. <laughs> and it kind of has like a cool meditative effect that totally separates you from your thoughts. Because as your natural system is telling you to get out, that's a thought, that's a reaction. But you as a powerful individual in control unique person has control of your mind says oh, i'm just gonna stay in here because this is health and some benefit kind of a unique distinct difference that you do not have to believe every thought that you think you can make the response you can make rather than a reaction you respond to your environment he's doing super great in here as this goes uh, there's three distinct little segments right now so right now he's about two minutes and 15 seconds in you hit first the fight or flight response you get the gasp then you start to have a tingle and then you move into the worst phase which is the burning which he's about to turn over right now it's right at about two minutes and 30 seconds that that initial horrible type of response of the burning that's uncomfortable and it's hard for you to get your breath under control kind of alleviates you and you start to go semi-numb and the sympathetics kind of fatigue and drop off and all of a sudden the overwhelming response of oh, and it's just super relaxing and you can just allow yourself to be cool thing about being in the water is you super present. It doesn't matter about the bills at home, about the fight you just had with your spouse or your or your uh, significant other, uh, about whatever's going on with the stressors at work. Is this is so intense? It pulls you out of the past and it pulls you out of the future and brings you right here into this moment. And that is a powerful meditation in and of itself and a powerful tool for you to recover and to help your body. So doing this has so many other benefits other than just the physiological. It gives you the power to combat stress, the power to center your mind and gain you the independent control that you look for to make responses and not just reactions. You can overcome pain and significant things in your body as inflammation goes under control. And then you can also be able to handle a little bit of extra chubby chub fats, you know? So it's all it's extra nice things. Okay. Doing great, man. Four minutes. How's things feeling? Amazing. Yeah. How long you want to go today? Uh, I don't know. Five, six, six cool. seven, whatever you're feeling. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever you want, and we'll be right here. Uh, I got plenty of things to say. If I go arms in, and yeah, 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 yeah. Right back. yeah. 
So this is great. So initially we start with the lower half, but going up to this part, actually right here at the base of your neck, um, where your neck joins your thoracic spine is the highest deposit of brown fat in the entire body. Brown fat is a unique system in and of itself is white fat simply stores energy for food, right? You know, it's a source of fatty acids that we can burn for energy to be able to fuel our system in the case that we don't have enough. Brown fat utilizes and burns only fatty acids, the white fat, but it is the internal combustion heater of the body. So this kicks on and at certain points in here, you actually get the, the feeling that you're warm. You, you feel that? Where you're like, oh, I'm kind of warm and I'm in the ice. Not sure how that works. Yeah, it sort of just feels like room temperature at a point. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's because we're triggering the heater on. We're not making ourselves addicted to 65 to 75 degrees anymore because now we're putting that stress on our body because we want recovery. We want clarity. We want that meditation. We want to be able to recover. And we want to feel good. And this is a fantastic thing. Lots of really cool new studies and stuff are coming out as well. I mean, just last year, November, the BBC came out and said that they think that polar plunges like this may be the cure to dementia uh, because of the way it cycles the cerebral spinal fluid in and out of the brain uh, because of the vascular response and the way it constricts and it causes like this negative drop pool and the lymphatics drain. Really awesome as to how that happens because of the increased flow and exchange there that might be beneficial for neurodegenerates. It's amazing. And so, uh, getting into uh, uh, the ice bath, certainly something that is very fun. And we can go through here if you want to come. First round is on me. I just want you to come and experience the cold. Come and see for yourself the benefits and the stress release that you can have by coming and uh, just sitting a few brief minutes into the ice. All right, man. 6.45, you want to go all the way to 7? Let's hit 7. Okay, seven, seven. it is. <laughs> and you kick up those tootsies there. Let's pull them out. Boom. Thank you. Thank you for coming and being our model, Miss Van White. <laughs> yeah. That's beauty. It's cool to see what happens to your skin, too. Yeah, so as he comes out, he's going to come out dry. And honestly, this is kind of one of the worst parts is when you first come out and your body realizes that you're no longer in the cold and it starts to pump the rest of the stuff around. You kind of get a little chill for a couple minutes. But within those first two minutes or so, that's when your body's heater really starts to kick on and you start to have that really sense of warmth that you're like, Come oh, warm feels great. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't, and I was in ice water. I don't know how I'm warm. Mm -hmm. That's the brown fat kicking in your internal heater going. Mm. So well done. Yeah, you see a little bit of the, the mm -hmm. shakes. <laughs> but it is a uh, fantastic. Yes. Come call us at Cell Reach In 541-716-1718. Uh, and uh, get a uh, a free session of cryotherapy on me and I'll come and put you through the breath work. I'll guide you through kind of a meditation while you're in the water so you can be able to do it. Most people now are able to go through that full three minutes and we're able to get people through it. It's been great. When we first started, I wasn't as good of a coach when we got this. I was getting people the 45 seconds or a minute and let them, and let them jump out. And now I'm just letting people know like this is a total let go exercise. The way for you to get your benefits is just allow it to happen. It's cold and it's going to be a little bit of a challenge when you first start. But I promise you, if you come here for free, that you'll enjoy it and you'll think it's worth it. So thank you guys very much for tuning in and listening. Hope you had a great time and hope to see you soon.